Giannis Antetokounmpo is easily one of the most athletically gifted players of all time because when you watch him on the court he does things that's almost wilt like but with the handle that he has it just adds another level of dominance to his game obviously he has a weakness he can't shoot threes or even make free throws consistently but when you factor in what he does on defense combined with how dominant he can be on offense man he is definitely worth the title of being a back-to-back -back mvp and he showed that against the nets yesterday dropping 49 points 49 points to be fair he did take i believe 36 shots i could be wrong correct me in the comment section but he converted on 21 of them so Giannis is still out there as a man amongst boys and he did that on the favorites now i know they didn't have james harden and kyrie Irving didn't even play that well in that game but you have to understand that James Harden is not going to solve any of the defensive issues, especially against a team like the Milwaukee Bucks or even the Philadelphia 76ers for that matter. He is strong and he's solid in the post for a guard, but he's not stopping Joel Embiid and he's not stopping Giannis. Those are guys that are easily going to feast on the lack of interior presence from the Brooklyn Nets. So when you look at that weakness from that team already, Giannis is going to have a dominant series. There's no doubt about that in my mind. They can't wall him up. They can't do what Miami did. Miami had Bam. They also had Iguodala, Jay Crowder, some strong guys on the interior. Who do the Nets have? Bruce Brown, too small, that's barbecue chicken. James Harden, guard, too small, that's barbecue chicken. DeAndre Jordan is old and washed. Blake Griffin actually did well against Giannis the other day, but they sent a lot of help at Blake Griffin. And like I said, that's not going to be enough because Giannis is just going to dribble around him like he did yesterday. Now, on the other hand, same thing with how Giannis is unstoppable with the Brooklyn Nets defense. You still have to worry about Kevin Durant because he is still unstoppable. Then you have to worry about James Harden, who is also unstoppable. And let's not forget, you have to worry about Kyrie Irving, Uncle Drew himself, who is also unstoppable. Those are three unstoppable offensive players, but if anybody in the league stands a chance at just throwing them off one game, and it doesn't have to be all three of them, it could just be one of them. That team is definitely the Milwaukee Bucks. They have defenders at every single position, two-way players you could argue. You have Drew Holiday, whose resume speaks for itself as an offensive and defensive player, obviously. Dante DiVincenzo is a good defensive player as well. Not as great of an offensive player as all the other guys in the lineup, but he doesn't have to be. You have Chris Middleton, who's a former All-Star and one of the most efficient scorers in the NBA. And in the front court alongside Giannis, you have Brooke Lopez, who's a good rim protector. But offensively, I will admit he's been a little inconsistent, especially from three. He can be a little bit streaky, but in the playoffs over the last couple of years, he really steps up more times than not, which I can't say the same for everybody else on this roster, even in this starting lineup. I'm just saying but regardless their defensive scheme does not work without Giannis because a guy like him is somebody that can play great help defense he's probably the best help defender in the league which is one of the main reasons why he even won defensive player of the year to begin with and this year he may not be the deep boy but I definitely think defensively he's still an elite defender as we all know but one thing about Giannis this year that a lot of people are not taking note of is his improvement at the free throw line I don't know what happened over the last couple of years maybe it's because he did put on more muscle but Giannis free throw ability got worse and it cost him a lot in the playoffs i will never forgive him for 2019 against the raptors being up four games to zero against them and a lot if not all of them were winnable if Giannis could just knock down his free throws because say what you want about eric bledsoe chucking threes like russell westbrook say what you want about chris middleton not playing well in the conference semifinals and against the raptors in the conference finals and say what you want about mike budenhoser's coaching system and Giannis's minutes all of that stuff that people say as an excuse Giannis has to make free throws especially in the playoffs you're an MVP caliber player you won the MVP twice in back-to-back -back seasons mind you so his ability to make free throws has to be something that he has worked on and over the last 35 games he's shooting 73 percent at the free throw line which may not seem like a great percentage but compared to last year where he shot 63% at the free throw line and then walked into the playoffs 
and also shot 58 percent yes 73 percent is a much needed increase that we needed to see this year but to be honest when i look at Giannis antetokounmpo I've always seen superstar potential from the moment he touched an NBA court. You can go far back to my old videos. I remember around his third, fourth year in the league, I was saying he's going to be the best player in the NBA one day. Obviously, he's not the best player, but he's definitely in that conversation. And he's on the verge of potentially doing something very historic because I don't think a lot of people understand that, yes, Giannis has failed over the last two years. But failure is what makes success that much more enjoyable. Dirk's ring in 2011 wouldn't have been enjoyable if he didn't have all those years of failure in the past, losing in the first round to the Warriors in a team that was eighth seed, by the way, one of the biggest upsets ever. Also, look at what happened when he went to the finals. He lost to Dwayne Wade going off and going ballistic, and Dirk didn't even play that well in that series. Dirk had a resume of always not finishing the job. And Giannis, I'm not saying he's like Dirk yet. Dirk, his choking was on a different level. I can't lie to you there. But Giannis is starting to get that label of being a playoff underperformer because he strictly can't shoot. But against the Nets, that's not going to be a problem because they can't stop him from doing what he does best, and that is dominating the post. He is a post presence that unless you have the personnel, which I have been saying over the last couple of years, if you don't have that, you're not stopping Giannis. And the issue that they had in the past of Chris Middleton not being able to be that number one guy, well, they don't have to worry about that because Giannis is free to be himself and he doesn't have to worry about a wall of Bam Adebayo and Jay Crowder and the crew. And hey, the Miami could surprise everybody again, but like I said in my last video, if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. I don't see Miami going anywhere past the second round at best. So that essentially leaves Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. And to be honest, anything that you can say about Giannis, you can say tenfold about Ben Simmons because at least Giannis attempts his threes. So as far as I'm concerned, Giannis is set up to at least get to the finals this year. He has a shot. Yes, he is not favored to beat the Nets because when the Nets are firing on all cylinders, nobody is going to stop them. That is just a fact of life. Having three superstars on your team creates what we call a super team we all know that but they have a weakness and Giannis is a specialist like I said earlier in that weakness and the playoffs are about matchups that's why the Heat were able to beat the Bucks in five games last year because they matched up so well against Giannis with the wings that they had on the perimeter and interior and this time Giannis doesn't have Eric Bledsoe he has Drew Holiday he actually has a good player running point guard, guys. Somebody that can actually make plays instead of chuck threes like Russell Westbrook and get cooked by Terry Rozier. Man, I hated playoff Bledsoe. Easily one of the worst players I've ever seen. Straight up, just a bad NBA player in the playoffs. And now they have Drew Holiday, who has a resume of stepping up in the postseason. Let's not forget when he outplayed Damian Lillard in the first round alongside Anthony Davis in New Orleans when they were a six seed against the Blazers who were a three seed. And I know Kyrie is amazing, but Damian Lillard is no slouch. Drew Holiday clamped Damian Lillard throughout that entire series. So to have faith in Drew being a consistent offensive option this series against the Nets or against any other team and having a great defensive series against whatever point guard is in front of him is not far-fetched at all. And with Giannis leading the helm instead of Anthony Davis in New Orleans with Drew, yeah, Giannis gets to the finals. That's the difference. And that's why he's going to be better than AD by the end of this year, because he's going to get to the finals, and AD might lose in a play-in game. That's tough. That's tough. But AA, hey, hey, Lakers fans... Get on me in the comment section all you want because that concludes this video. <laughs> I'm not even going to defend that. Make sure y'all drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel because I know a lot of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So make sure you do that and press the bell for post notifications. And that concludes this video. Giannis, I'm rooting for you. I root for all my Nigerian brothers. You keep balling. Hopefully you get that ring and bring it to Milwaukee. This is your boy Young Muster signing out. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.